New developments out of Oxford involving a former police officer who is facing a murder charge. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. Attorney Carlos Moore filed a notice on behalf of the family of Dominique Clayton seeking more than $5 million in damages from the city in connection with her death. Clayton was found dead in her home on May 19th. Our Quentin Smith joins us live in the studio with the latest details. Quentin, what are they suing the city for? Scott, attorney Carlos Moore says they're suing the city for wrongful death and negligence. Now, the notice, it lays out what the firm believes led up to Clayton's death, allegedly at the hands of former Oxford police officer Matthew Kinney. You have murder. Uh, you have sex, you have lies, and you have videotape. The Clayton family attorney, Carlos Moore, stands behind his words when saying the city of Oxford is responsible for the death of Dominique Clayton. He believes her murder was premeditated. My investigation revealed that uh, Matthew Kinney was on the clock when he killed uh, Ms. Clayton. And he used his city-owned uh, issued weapon. He used a city cruiser. Uh, and he was in uniform when he did it, so we believe he acted under color of state law. In a notice that was filed, Moore says then Oxford police officer Matthew Kinney would routinely visit Clayton prior to her death. We believe that the supervisors had to have known this man was missing uh, between two and three hours several nights a week while he went to have uh, conjugal visits uh, with Miss Clayton. And so why did they allow it to go on for so long? Uh, I believe the city uh, officers were complicit in her death. The notice also states that before she died, Clayton thought she was pregnant by Officer Kenny. Moore says so far that hasn't been proven. However, he did say that Clayton and the former officer were involved romantically for two years, which he believes likely could have been the motive behind the killing. That's speculation. That, that's one possible motive. Another possible motive is a fatal attraction. Uh, some of her friends have told me that she wanted to leave uh, Matthew Kenny and he did not want her to leave. She, he wanted her to remain in a relationship with him. And some people, when they have a fatal attraction, if they cannot have you, they'd rather have you dead. Kenny is currently behind bars in Panola County, charged with first-degree murder. However, Moore and the family now want to see those charges upgraded. We believe what he did was uh, callous. We believe it was cold-blooded murder. Uh, we believe he broke into the house and committed the crime. So anytime there's two felonies, that's capital murder. The city of Oxford now has 90 days to respond to the notice. If not, Moore says a lawsuit will be filed. The mayor's office tells us they have no comment on the matter at this time. Scott? We'll be following this one pretty closely. Thank you very much, Quentin. Starkville Police, they're investigating a shooting incident at McKee Park that happened tonight. The police department tweeted that it is looking for a blue Nissan Altima occupied by two black males. Officers responded to the report of a shooting just after 6 o'clock this evening. When they arrived, the suspects were gone. A male victim was taken to the hospital for a gunshot wound. The department said there's no active threat to the public, but if you see the vehicle, you're asked to call Starkville Police or the Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. A traffic stop leads to the arrest of a Cedar Bluff teenager, 19-year-old Levi Williams, was pulled over by a Clay County K-9 unit on Highway 50 over the weekend. Deputies charged Williams with possession of cocaine. His bond has been set at $2,500. A man who pled guilty to a 2016 child sex crime will serve 30 years in prison and faces deportation. 34-year-old Luis Enrique Acosta Escobar, who is in the U.S. illegally, is charged with forcing sexual intercourse on a child under 14. Today, Acosta Escobar was sentenced to 40 years in prison with 10 years suspended. He will then be required to register as a sex offender and faces deportation after his sentence. Switching gears now, time to get a first look at our Monday night forecast. We'll send things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Hey there, Keith. Scott, muggy conditions earlier today. You can see those bubbling clouds here at Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon. Now, as we went throughout the course of the late afternoon and the evening, a lot of that moisture is getting out of here. You certainly know that if you've been out and about. Look at these numbers. 66 in Oxford. Most of us, though, still in the low 70s to mid 70s out there. Quite pleasant relative to where we have been recently. We've had a lot of nights that will, we're down to about 72 degrees, but tonight we're down into the upper 50s by sunrise. Great weather out there. A nice breath of fresh air. And for your Tuesday, 70s to low 80s for high. Some scattered clouds, but a pretty nice day. Your full forecast is coming up. Mississippians with disabilities now have an empowering new program available to help save money. The Mississippi ABLE program is helping out or helping cut through some of the red tape. Courtney Ann Jackson introduces us to some of the families finding a financial freedom they never thought they'd see. 
Can you have too much in savings? Mississippians with disabilities could for years. If their savings exceeded $2,000, they could lose their public benefits. It's handcuffed you. But now the state of Mississippi has given us, and MDRS has given us wings. The wings Antonio writes describing are through the ABLE program, giving the ability to build the savings total up to $15,000 each year with a maximum balance of $235,000. This betters our state because individually we can better our homes. Lauren Compeer says no matter if you grew up in a family that told you to shoot for the stars, the law put a limit on that. And these strict limits really over time, I believe, have discouraged us from being entrepreneurs, from being CEOs, and from being highly successful businessmen and women. Mindy Rogers and her son Ben were the first in the state to set up an account. The savings can be used for qualified disability expenses. To save for his future, for like when Paul and I aren't here to take care of him, and like we, he can um, get hearing aids, he can have repairs on his house, maintenance on his house, uh, things that he needs that he can have access to without having to go to court, like through a special needs trust fund. Lily Lape also created an account with her dad a day he didn't think would be possible. So we kind of did it at 90-10 to where we're doing investment plus checking. So we're setting up for her future so that way when she's old enough to actually have a checking account, She'll have money already in there that she can start spending on. I mean, our goal is that she'll be able to live independently. And that's the ultimate goal here, giving those with disabilities a financial independence. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. New tonight, a group of youngsters will spend this week learning how to defuse potential conflicts and defend themselves if necessary. It's all part of summertime camps at Tupelo's Police Athletic League. Riley Martin has more. For the first self-defense class of the week, Get up. Get up. Move. Move. students are learning the basics. Move. There you go. Tupelo's Police Athletic League hosts camps throughout the summer. The self-defense class teaches simple techniques that can be used by anyone. Instructors say the classes help build self-esteem and also encourage children to have a game plan in any situation. The goal is to avoid the conflict. But that is not always possible, so PAL Director Jason Smith wants his students to be able to defend themselves, get away, and find an adult. If you're just defending yourself and you're trying to get other people involved to help defuse the situation, you're going to come out a lot better than continuing to fight and beat somebody up or something. You're going to come out a lot better. It is a self-defense class, but so much more is taught valuable life lessons and principles like character and respect. How to have self-control of, of itself and have respect for what they're doing and then when they decide to come to the confidence of it, they'll know what to do and how to handle it. Students say they have already learned a lot. I try to protect myself and defend myself from others who try to come at me. If somebody can hit, you can dodge it, self will get hurt. How camps run through July. In Tupelo Alley, Martin, WCBI News. Now for a list of the PAL camps, just go to the Tupelo Police Athletic League's Facebook page. 74 right now here in the city of Columbus. Things are feeling pretty good. Still a little bit of a breeze stirring things up. Lows tonight quite comfortable. Tomorrow on your Tuesday, look at this, not a typo here. We're looking at some 70s and low 80s in June. Full forecast is next. CBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Just a few isolated blips on radar today, and that was our 24-hour radar estimate here. Down in Winston County, maybe around Starkville and parts of western Axby County. I say maybe because we had some clouds moving on through, a few raindrops coming from them. You can see that with our Alpha Insurance time lapse from downtown Louisville, Mississippi, looking off to the southeast. And those clouds are coming in from the northwest, moving to the southeast behind a cold front that moved on through. And notice the flags whipping around there at Fair Park in downtown Tupelo, the clouds going away. Moisture levels are dropping out there. The dew point measures how much moisture is actually in the air. And notice that trend right there, currently down into the 50s in Tupelo. And that is a sign of things behind the front that moved on through over the last 24 hours. So the drier air has returned, thankfully. A nice breath of fresh air will take it. But the humidity comes on back 
By the weekend, a couple of days sandwiched in between, pretty nice. Scattered high clouds streaming on in from the southwest right now. Uh, those will just be a lot as we go through tonight and tomorrow. Still some filtered sunshine. And that coupled with that northerly breeze that will continue tomorrow and the lower humidity. Notice the clouds right there. But in general, a pretty nice Tuesday for 70s to low 80s for us. As we get into your day Wednesday, partly cloudy, maybe a little bit warmer. But there's another front, another reinforcing shot of cooler air for Thursday, maybe Friday too. As that front approaches late Wednesday and Wednesday evening, we may squeeze out a stray shower or thunder shower. But at this point, we're keeping the forecast dry. So in general, not too bad as we go through your Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a fair amount of sunshine, comfortable temperatures here. But again, as I mentioned, the humidity ramps on up just in time for next weekend. We've got 67 in Little Rock, still 75 in Montgomery, Alabama. Temperatures are dropping because the winds are now from the north, ushering in that cooler air and drier air. 58 degrees by sunrise just before 6 o'clock in the morning. And later on, Upper 70s to low 80s, about 82 degrees. So here's your city by city forecast. 81 for you in Tupelo, 80 or so over there in Bruce, 82 in West Point and Macon, 80 in Ackerman. And over here in the West Alabama as well, we are looking at temperatures around 80 degrees. Your regional forecast shows pretty nice weather, the best chance for storms down there in southeastern Georgia. But around here, we're looking pretty good, really, for your Wednesday, 85, 82 Thursday, low still into the 50s Friday morning, 87 Friday afternoon, 91 Saturday, 89 Sunday and Monday with a better chance for storms. The Rebels needed the rubber match to go from Fayetteville to Omaha. Would they get it? We'll have a live report coming up later in sports. Well, keeping your kids healthy and safe is a parent's top priority. Tonight, we discuss when an emergency is urgent enough to take them to the ER in our Health Talk with Baptist. Hi, I'm Dr. Pam Sykes, a pediatrician at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. One of the most common questions I get from parents is when do I need to take my child to the emergency room? We need to remember that ER stands for emergency room, which means it is for life or death emergencies. This includes health concerns that cannot wait until the morning when a patient can see their regular pediatrician. The definition of an emergency can be subdivided by age, and tonight we will discuss recommendations for infants younger than two months old. An infant younger than two months old should be taken to the ER if they have a fever greater than 100.4 rectally. For a baby younger than two months old, fever is a significant finding that frequently requires admission to the hospital. Difficulty breathing. Breathing hard, fast, wheezing, or labored breathing is an emergency that should be evaluated immediately. Vomiting, not just reflux, which could cause dehydration. I frequently remind my patients that ER docs are trained for life and death emergencies and are not trained for routine infant child care. A runny nose, cough, cold, congestion, constipation, pink eye, these are all symptoms that are not generally life-threatening and are best managed by your child's regular pediatrician. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist when we will discuss fever. Mail your topic suggestions to healthtalk at wcbi.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. of the NCAA Baseball Super Regionals is brought to you in part by Monroe County Farm Bureau, Granite Guys, OCH Regional Medical Center, Advanced Medicine Compassionate Care, Visit Columbus, the city that has it all, and Bank First, a better way to bank. Ole Miss one win away from punching its first ticket to Omaha since 2014, a day where history could be made 
for Mississippi, having the Rebels and Bulldogs in the College World Series for the first time ever together. Only the Razorbacks standing in the way, calling the Hogs in Fayetteville. Winner takes all game three in the first inning. One on, one out. Kolzabowski at bat. Rebels looking sharp early. Drives one to right field for a single. Ryan Olenek advances to third, so runners on the corners. Very next batter, Ole Miss had the bats red hot yesterday, trying to keep it that way. Cooper Johnson hits one up the gut to center field. That will score a run, giving the Rebels an early 1-0 lead. But if you've been paying attention to this series, whoever struck first usually didn't last long. Two on, one out for Gunnar Hoagland pitching Casey Opitz. One to shallow right center for an RBI single. Arkansas ties the ball game up in the bottom of the second. Same inning runners on the corner. Jacob Nesbitt ropes one down the third baseline for an RBI double. That gives the Hogs to lead, and that was just the beginning of an offensive ex explosion for Arkansas. Trevor Ezel likes what he sees, knocks one to right field, scores two more Razorbacks. Arkansas pours it on and dominates game three. They get the W over Ole Miss 14 to one. Rebels fall just one game short of the College World Series. WCBI Sports' is Chris Bolton joins us now live from Fayetteville on what exactly went wrong for Ole Miss. Well, Tom, the run ends here in Fayetteville for Ole Miss as they struggle against Arkansas. And honestly, this series really summarizes the type of season it's been for the Rebs, as it's just been an up and down type of year for them. Now for Ole Miss, even though the season didn't end the way they would have liked, they can hang their head on the fact that they found themselves towards the end of the year and finished the year playing some of their best baseball. I think we'll always be remembered for, you know, being here, you know, unfortunately, you know, it, it ended, you know, uh, one game short of Omaha, but uh, a time where, and I've seen teams, you know, not just at Ole Miss, but others where, you know, you, you don't play well at the end and, you know, you just go, what happened to them? They were, they were real good, but they'll be remembered for, for finishing, you know, for playing well in Hoover, playing uh, super last week at home uh, uh, and uh, just coming up a game short. We went through periods where we were just really dominant. We went through periods where it looked like we'd never picked up a baseball. Um, but, you know, overall, just, you know, proud of where we are right now. These guys have grown into my best friends and people that, you know, I'll continue to have relationships for the rest of my life. Um, and, you know, I, I couldn't have asked to be a part of something so great. Now, this might be the last time we see some of these guys don the Ole Miss jersey. I mean, you have guys like Thomas Dillard, Gray Kessinger, Cooper Johnson, and others who were all selected in the MLB draft. But despite that, there's going to be a very talented bunch of guys returning next season. And you also have a top-tier recruiting class coming in. So it wouldn't surprise me if we're right back at this time next year covering another Ole Miss Super Regional. But for now, my last time in Fayetteville, Chris Bolton, WCBI Sports. Fantastic job by Chris as always, but switching gears, Mississippi State, they're off to Omaha and remain perfect in the postseason, sweeping its regional and adding a super regional sweep to 2019. Duty Noble Field was electric, living up to the expectations, almost 25,000 attending the two super regional games this weekend. Dustin Skelton saying Stanford was in awe of the atmosphere. I talked to the, I talked to the shortstop and uh, he said, man, our regional, we had we had a sold out crowd of 2,300 or 2,800 or whatever it was, and I said, "Yeah, well, you're in front of 13,000 right now. How's it feel?" And he's like, "Man, it's 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 unlike anywhere else." I can't talk to my coaches. I mean, it is so loud, and and they are so into it and so knowledgeable about the game. Um, you know, I told John after the game. I mean, what what an unbelievable place to play, and I, I didn't. I was never here at the old ballpark, but this, this new one is special. That's it for sports. Last look, your weather is next. Just great weather coming on in here, starting right now all the way through, uh, let's just say Friday afternoon before the humidity comes in back. Enjoy it. Open up the windows perhaps later tonight. Yeah, we like this for June. Not Love it. Love it. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.